I'm Jeannie Devon and let's get Zebra Strong. Welcome to the letter L in our A to Z of hypermobility and I've chosen ligament laxity. So two words, laxity and ligaments and they go together um, and see the ligaments um, in hypermobility can be lax, so they hold the bones together, and then they're more flexible, um, they have more um, laxity um, than non-hypermobile people, which means that you can go to greater ranges than non-hypermobile people. Um, and for many people, you know, that's not a problem. You know, dancers, um, athletes, a lot of them have these big ranges of movements, and they don't have any pain. Um, but what if you do have pain with your hypermobility and uh, ligaments uh, laxity? So it's important to try and build the muscle tone around the joint, around um, that's so that you're literally using the muscles to support the joint and not hanging off your ligaments. And um, that's what a lot of us do is that we use the ligaments um, as our stabilizers and we're not activating the connective tissue um, and the muscle around the joint. So we need to address that, especially if you're prone to injuries, if you're prone to subluxations or dislocations, we need to make those ligaments um, a little bit more supported around that joint capsule. So that's where things like resistance work can be really, really useful. Um, and you don't have to go crazy when you're first starting out, you don't have to go and start lifting weights. Um, but having this, um, a couple of very simple TheraBand exercises um, and doing some isometric muscle work can actually be really, really beneficial. So isometric work um, is an important part of any hypermobility um, movement therapy program. So we're going to try a little um, shoulder stability exercise with this TheraBand um, isometric work to help you start to build that sense of a bit of muscle strength um, around the joint rather than allowing the arms to kind of hang out of their sockets and really putting strain on the joints. You know, if you think the arms are quite heavy and, and a lot of people will kind of feel that the arms are hanging down from the body instead of being held in the socket correctly. Now, if we can strengthen this whole area, we're gonna feel that we're holding ourselves up rather than the arms kind of falling out of the sockets. So it's almost like your armpit chest. You've gotta feel that you're being lifted up through the armpit chest rather than just hanging. So if you've got a TheraBand, you know, start off with a light one if you're particularly prone to um, injuries or subluxations in this area. And go ahead and lie down on your back. So the first thing we're gonna do is just hold that, ideally with your thumb and your finger, but if that starts to hurt, as we get into it, just wrap your hands around it. Just don't grip it too hard because you could strain um, your hands and your wrists. So if we start, just settle yourself in, take a couple of breaths. And then as you exhale, keeping that band shoulder distance apart, so with some tension in it, just start to float the arms up to the ceiling. Now, as the arms go up, we want those shoulders to stay nice and heavy into the ground. Now, Keep a little bit of tension in that band. So don't sort of have it here all saggy in the middle. Keep it nice and taut. And turn your attention to the little finger side of your hand. And just feel that you're holding this band from your little finger side of your hand. And all we're gonna do is do some shoulder dives. So you're gonna keep the band taut. So this isn't the isometric bit, okay? We're just gonna get awareness around that area. So you're gonna keep the band taut. You're gonna inhale, lift, your shoulder blades off the floor, keeping the band taut, exhale, feel the shoulder blades coming back down into the floor. So we go inhale up, try not to lock those elbows. Remember we were talking about joint locking in our last um, couple of videos. So inhaling up, soft elbows, exhaling down, heavy shoulders. So the movement comes from behind the shoulder blades, 
as you go up and down. Inhaling up, exhaling down. Inhaling up, exhaling down. So we're really noticing that to move the arms, I have to move the shoulder blades and the movement comes from underneath the shoulder blades all the way in my back. So we're not lifting from just from the front of that shoulder. Now, next time you're down, let those shoulders feel really heavy. And again, turn your attention to the little finger side of your hand. Check that your ribs and your pelvis are really settled into the ground. And again, if this is where you need to do this and wrap your fingers around, that's fine, okay? Because what I want you to do, don't pull the band apart, but I want you to just increase the pressure in the band. So think of the little finger gently being pulled apart. So I haven't pulled the band a long way apart, but I've got more work going on than I had a moment ago. Check those elbows are soft and just gently pull that band apart. Feel like you're keeping those shoulders on the ground and hold this for three seconds while you maintain that stability and alignment of the shoulder and then softly release and you'll feel the band go back to its first position. So from the little finger down to the back of the armpit, we just put a little extra pressure in the band and we hold it for three seconds, keeping the pelvis nice and heavy. Now I'm just starting with three seconds. You could do less than that or you could do more. So you might find you can hold this for I don't know, six, seven seconds. And then release. We'll do two more. So I'm gonna do five reps. Again, if you feel you can do more than five reps, then obviously listen to your body and do a little more if you can. Last one, hold it there. Now this time, keeping that little bit of extra tension, just see if you can maintain that as we take our arms into an arm roll. So can we just move the arms back a little bit and then bring them forward. So we've got that stability in the shoulder. See if you can just gently move the arms. Doesn't have to be big. Notice how small I'm doing this. And then come back and just start to softly bend the elbows, keeping those shoulders nice and heavy onto the ground, and then just let your arms come down. Just release your hands, maybe do a few wrist circles um, if your fingers and your wrists are starting to get a little bit um, tired from doing that. So that's just a little bit of an isometric shoulder exercise um, that is good to start off because you're lying on your back. Now another version, if you can sit up, um, and you could do this, um, I guess, leaning against the back of the sofa or something, or, um, but you need a little bit of room to move your arms backwards. Because what we're gonna do is the same thing. We're thinking of moving from the back of the shoulder. And again, I'm gonna just draw my elbows back. Try not to arch your back or collapse as you do this. So you're literally just moving from this area. Okay, so I'm going to draw back, keep those collarbones wide, check that your neck is not getting involved. And again, can you hold this for two, three seconds? Really holding, feel that work going on at the back of the armpit. And then let the arm slowly release without the shoulders popping forward. So we draw back and we're going to hold it. Obviously keep breathing while you hold these positions. It's very tempting to hold the breath because we're so concentrated on what we're doing. So draw back, breathe. And let it go. And one last time, draw back. So it's a bit like a rowing machine, I guess. Breathe. And let it go. And then just release again, just do a few wrist circles, relax your hands. So just a couple of ideas to start working on some isometric work, which can help support the ligament um, in the joint. So to help um, with that laxity um, that we often experience. So I hope that was helpful. Let me know in the comments below. And until next time, stay Zebra Strong.